else. I'm going to walk you through outputting color separations in CorelDRAW from a file that I customized in Graphics Flow. So after changing the text and colors in this file using the Graphics Flow Stock Art Customizer, I saved the file to my art. To download the file, I simply clicked on the file to enter the detail view. You'll notice a button here that has an ellipse icon. I'm going to select that button. I'm going to select Download CDR. I'm going to name the file. And I'm going to click on Save to download the file. Next, I'll open up the file in CorelDRAW. I'll go to File. I'll select Open. I'll highlight the file. Click on Open. If I want to zoom in, I'm going to hit F4 to zoom into the entire graphic. Now, you'll notice one thing about this design. It has a weathered overlay. And if I select that weathered overlay, this is a bitmap that's sitting over the top of the graphic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this overlay just to make it a little bit easier to edit the file. So I'm going to go over here to Objects in the Object Manager. I'm going to select that object. I'm going to click on the eye icon to hide that layer. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Color Styles Docker. So I'm going to go to Window, Dockers, Color Styles, and I'm going to add this design to Color Styles. And this is going to analyze all the colors in the design and list them. So the best way to do that is to select the entire graphic, right click, and select Color Styles, New from Selected. The reason we want to do new from selected is there might already be colors in the design from the previous document before we recolored it. This will only add the colors that are currently in the design. So the colors will be displayed over here and I can hover my mouse over those colors to see what's going on here. And I notice one thing right away. I actually have multiple colors of blue and one of those blues is RGB and the other two blues are Pantone. So I just want to have one Pantone blue. So I'm going to select the first blue. I'm going to hold down my control key and select the other two blues and I'm going to select merge to merge those into a single blue. The first color I selected will be the color that they're merged into. Now the next thing I'm going to notice is that we have a gold here that's in RGB. This will not produce a color separation because it's an RGB color that's not set to spot. So what we want to do is select that color, go over here, select convert to spot and now even though that's an rgb color it will produce a color separation and you'll notice there's a little square indicating that it's a spot color once i converted that color to spot now if i want to recolor the design a couple different ways of doing that number one i can go over here and hold down my shift key just click on a color in this case i'm in the pantone solid coated color palette all of the pantone palettes are incorporated into corel draw so i've selected the solid coated palette I'm going to go over here and just type in 289 and we're going to click on OK. That's going to go down to Pantone 289. I'm going to select the blue. I'm going to select the dropper and I'm going to click on that 289 and it's going to convert all of those colors to 289. Now what I'm going to do in the case of the gold here, I'm going to turn that into orange. So I'm just going to go to the orange color here in the Pantone solid coated color palette. I'm going to select on that gold. Again, I'm going to grab the dropper and I'm going to click on the orange. So it's super easy to recolor designs using the color styles function in CorelDRAW. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the weathered effect and we turned that off. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back on just by going over here to the little icon for show where you turn that back on. And again, you can see this is a bitmap that's floating over the top of the graphic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask that into the graphic using the power clip function. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select the graphic. I'm going to hit control G to group it. I'm going to change my page color real quick here just so you can see what's going on. I'm just going to double click on the page. I'm going to select background. I'm going to give it a solid gray background. And then one thing that's very important is to uncheck print and export background. So we're going to go ahead and click on that so we don't accidentally print the background when we do separations. And now you're going to see that, that white outline there. So what we're going to do is we're going to power clip that into the graphic. So the easiest way to do that is just to right mouse click, drag it, hover it over the graphic, release your right mouse button, and say power clip inside. So once we've done that, we can also do advanced editing. So you'll notice over here when I have the graphic selected, you have an edit button. I'm going to select edit. And this is going to give me the ability to reposition that overlay. I can even duplicate it to create a double density overlay. I'm going to hit control D to duplicate it. I'm going to select the duplicated version. 
click on it one more time to get these rotation handles. And I'm going to rotate that. And then I'm going to hit finish. And now we even have a higher density overlay. At this point, our file is set up and we're ready to output color separations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select file and print. And then I'm going to select my print driver. In this case, I'm just going to use a general device independent PostScript file, PostScript driver. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select color and separations versus a composite image. You notice I'm getting a preview over here. If you don't see that preview, that's a little button here that gives you kind of a miniature preview. You can scroll through the different separations. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off some of this extraneous um, data right here. So we're going to go down here to pre-press. I'm going to turn off print file information and cropping fold marks and color calibration bar and decitometer. And I'm going to leave print registration marks on there for now. But you can clearly see the color separations. And one thing you're going to notice is there's a separation for the weathered overlay. So something that's very important in this particular file, I have two whites. I have the white for the weathered overlay, and then I also have white in the graphic. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the white in the overlay. And in this case, the white is knocking through all of the colors. I'm going to leave the white in the graphic because we are going to actually print the white. Now you'll notice over here under advanced, we have all the postscript settings. So if you're going in and editing the dot frequency and angle of a halftone, you can do that from right in here. And then you also have the ability to preview all of the separations. So I'm just doing a simple little preview. There's my separation for orange. There's the white separation. And there's the 289 blue separation. The next step would be to go over here to general where you see print. If you have any printer specific data here, you can click on the little cog icon. We want to make sure that our page layout in the printer matches the document in CorelDRAW. If you're printing out to a RIP software, when you click print, it's going to open up your RIP. You can preview the images before finally outputting to your printer. If you're printing directly to a printer, you would select your printer from the drivers, click print, and you'll print out solid black images onto film for each color that's in the design. It's easy to output color separations in CorelDRAW from graphics that you customize in Graphics Flow. The key is making sure that you designate a specific number of spot colors.